Welcome back. The world mocked Malaria Day yesterday with the theme reaching the zero malaria target. It comes as scientists from Oxford University say a vaccine they developed has proven highly effective in a trial in babies in Africa. They also say the vaccine was 77% effective in the year-long trial of 450 children in Burkina Faso. Coming back home, Nigeria has one of the highest numbers of global malaria cases, as well as the highest number of deaths. And this morning, we're uh, going to be joined by Dr. Ronald Ikbe uh, to share on World Malaria, malaria Day and, of course, uh, efforts that need to be taken here in Nigeria and across the world to rid, the, rid our continent of malaria, if, if possible. Good morning, Dr. Dr. Ronald. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. I, I want us to start with uh, some positivity this morning. So let's quickly share, um, I'll get you to share with us some of the good things that we may have achieved in the last long while, in the last couple of years, in the fight against malaria. The positives? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so um, malaria, as we know, is <laughs> endemic to Nigeria and Africa. And uh, it's been an age-long uh, battle so far. But despite that, we've been making gains. You know, uh, there has been increase in the use of uh, insecticide dead nets from about 2% uh, in 2000 to about 55% in the year 2015, which is good. So that means uh, there's been a, a little drop in the incidence of malaria, despite the fact that it's still one of the greatest killers out there in Africa. So, and um, also uh, interventions like treatment, testing, have also been scaled up. So I think we're making some progress, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Really, uh, Dr. Ronald Ikpe, despite this progress, we know that Nigeria has, you know, is the country with one of the highest, you know, malaria deaths and incidences Definitely. in the country. And uh, this statistics is even, you know, more grim in, you know, the rural communities. So, so how can we take the anti-malaria fights to the rural communities to make sure that they're carried along with all the successes that we're recording, you know, in the fight against malaria? Well, I, I think a lot of advocacy needs to be done. Uh, first, for, for malaria control, there are a lot of things that need to be done. Firstly, we talk about vector control. That's the part, uh, mosquito itself. It has to be controlled. Now, typically around us, uh, our environment is dirty. The gutters are clogged up. They are not moving. A lot of stagnant water. Uh, bushes around us, all of that. So those are the first things we need to do. Get rid of the breeding sites for these mosquitoes. Discard trash properly. Uh, clean the gutters regularly. I was even discussing with someone yesterday that uh, back then we used to do this Saturday sanitation out there, which was a regular thing. But now it's it's no longer the norm. You know, our gutters are all clogged up and stagnant. You see mosquitoes breeding left, right, and center. So these are the things we need to bring back. We need to be more responsible and uh, proactive towards keep, keeping the environment clean. Then uh, secondly, you need to get tested and treated. So not everything is malaria, really. Everybody has a slight headache, I have malaria, and you go and pop the pills. Because part of the problem now is resistance to some of the routine uh, anti-malaria because a lot of people are abusing those medications. So these are some of the messages we need to scale up out there to yes, help Mr. Ike. the control. Talking about that, you know, drug resistance to anti-malaria and also fake medicines. How is Nigeria dealing with these challenges? Well, it's a tough one, really. Where, for instance, we really don't have tight regulations as to who gets drugs and as to where you can walk into a pharmacy or chemists or roadside market and buy whatever drug you want to buy simply because you think you have malaria. So these are some of the issues, right? So we need tighter regulations as to how these drugs are accessible. 
to everyone out there. All right, that's, you know, like you mentioned, there's a lot of work that also needs to be done that would help the fight. If our environment continues to allow um, uh, mosquitoes to breed and to increase in yes. numbers, then, you know, exactly. we, we may never win this fight. So, so we have a long way to go. And when you mentioned gutters, I'm looking, you know, even on Lagos Island, the whole of Lekki Phase 1, Victoria Island, there's a lot of these gutters that Saturday environmental sanitation would not solve. Um, it, it, there's a, a lot, the infrastructure deficit really is a, a huge problem. So I hope we'll get, we'll get back to that before we end the program. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the vaccine trials that have started in certain countries in Africa, Kenya, Ghana, and um, I'm not sure what the last one is. Um, how well is that going? Is that good news? And do you think that those uh, vaccines will eventually get to Nigeria? Well, it's good news uh, because, uh, because so far we've not been able to eradicate it through the normal testing and treating, and like you mentioned, have a long way to go. So if the vaccines are available, I think that might scale up our efforts toward the uh, eradication. So, so far, they've said uh, they have about 70% efficacy of the current trials doing right now, which is actually very good. And I think uh, there was also a phase trial somewhere, sometime this month, Yes, with the RTS vaccine, and there is a phase three being planned across uh, four African countries. So it's a good step, really. So I think it's something we should be happy about. All right, uh, Dr. Ronald Ipe, thank you very much for your time and thoughts on the breakfast this morning. All right. All right. All right, we'll be taking a break here to share some good news. We just shared some regarding the malaria vaccine, and this one is about Nigerian students who are doing great in diaspora. Stay with us.